Welcome to episode number 65 of the Backlog Podcast. I am your host, Kevin. And with us today, we have Brian Haynes, who is Reaper of Hugs 42 on Twitch and all the social media platforms. And we're going to be talking with him today in a pretty cool interview that we set up on Twitch and we broadcasted live the other day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and jump right into episode 65, Reaper of Hugs 42. He's going for partner, so take a listen. This is the Backlog Podcast with Kevin Lane, bringing you weekly discussions on gaming as well as quick insights into sports, entertainment, and anything else that they can think of. Be sure to check out thebacklogexposed.com where you can listen to the podcast and get links to Twitter, Discord, YouTube, and Facebook. Now, gear up and get ready, because this backlog is about to be exposed. So for everyone out there who isn't familiar, this is episode number 65 of the Backlog Podcast. I am your host, Kevin, and with us today, we have Brian Haynes. He goes by the name of Reaper of Hugs, and you can find him on social media at Reaper of Hugs 42 on both Instagram and Twitter as well as Twitch. It's very important that you figure out that Twitch because he's going up. He's going up the, the charts every single day. Uh, as always, real quick, you can find us at thebacklogpod.com where we do weekly podcasts and we're having different guests every week. And this week, it is the man. And if you have watched this man, you know he's got some energy in those pants. But the biggest question is, why have you not gifted Jazz any pants yet? It's because... I got to make sure that the pants are good quality because I bought a, a tank top from Streamlabs and it actually washed out. The graphic washed out really quick. So uh-huh. I took it off the merchandise place before I even used it. So, And if Jazzy <laughs> ever wins the giveaway, I'll just give her the pants right away. You hear that, Jazzy? All right. She says perfect. Or did she say perfect? No, Coyote did. I don't know, Jazzy. What is that a good enough answer? Is that acceptable? All right. So if you know him, then you've probably already read his profile. I'm going to go over just a couple of highlights here. Uh, as we know, he is a full-time firefighter and EMT, and uh, that's part of the delay we had here today. He's just out there saving lives, man. He's just out there doing what he has to do. But he's also a lifetime gamer, and over the last couple of months, he's put a lot of effort into his Twitch channel, into his community, Reaps and Peeps. And, uh, you know, if you're out there, go ahead and, um, you know, one of the mods or someone shout out his, um, his Twitch channel. I'm sure you already all have it, but it doesn't matter. There might be a few people who don't. And... Uh, a couple of other things real quick I want to point out, too, is he's on his path to partner, and if you want to help, he has a stream schedule. You can find that stream schedule. Uh, well, you have it linked to your Instagram. Is there any other place that you can find that stream schedule? Oh, yeah. I put it on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, and uh, it just pretty much gets updated every Friday or Saturday for the next week, and you can just find it okay. on there. Awesome, awesome. Okay. And if you're wondering what kind of content he streams, he's got Dead Cells, Cuphead, Doom, PUBG, We Happy Few, Need for Speed, Marbles on Stream, Castlevania, Dark Souls 3, and many more, as he puts it. Lately, he has made it to the top of the charts of Doom on Twitch. If you want to watch Doom, he's your guy. If you want to watch him, he's probably playing Doom, but he's also playing a lot of other games. Uh, Brian, the, the biggest thing for me that stopped me and actually made me, you know, I, I, I get with people who say... Um, you know, go help this guy out. Go help that girl out. I- I'm all aboard that stuff. But when I went to your stream, it w- I stayed because you were doing a charity stream. And it it meant a lot to me, uh, the charity. Uh, it, I-, I don't remember the name of the charity. But long story short, um, you do that all the time, at least from what I've seen. And so it's not just about you becoming partner. It's about you building a community of people who have a similar mindset, and we talked about it before uh, we went live here with with the chat, but you're build, building a community of people who all kind of want to do what you do. Yes, there's going to be an audience of, of growth in that uh, there's going to be people who have no desire to stream, who want to watch you, but right now, I mean, it's a lot of streamers, it's a lot of people with their own brand, their own image, that they, they have their own customers, or so to speak, and you're not just presenting yourself, but you're out there shouting out people you're out there saying hi to people telling people to follow other people it's a pretty significant effort and you put a lot of energy into it so one of the first things i wanted to ask you is 
when did you start that effort of wanting to help others while you grow and why why was that the choice uh pretty quick actually when i started streaming because i uh had two other friends i think i'd only been streaming for a week and two other friends wanted to join in immediately and uh pretty much i figured the best way to get us all together was to start a discord community I, I never really wanted a personal one for myself i didn't really care about that and uh, made it and i actually met red hammer gaming and just met him on instagram and stopped by his stream and chatted with him and from then i was just like i just kind of really loved watching how excited people got for you to stop into their streams and how much it mattered for you to connect other smaller streamers that were really just trying to grow and get on their feet i mean just kind of develop those connections with people and just meant a lot to them oh and i really enjoyed uh, seeing that and watching that happen and uh so it just kind of kept going and taking off and i figured one of the big, biggest things to do would just the more i could grow the community and bring in more people that are like-minded like that was the biggest part because we had a lot of people drop by that initially in reaps and peeps would be you know support for support or whatever and would ask for support but then i would never see them in each other's channels and I don't yes. think people realize I'm in a lot of channels watching yeah, the chat and seeing who chats with who. And I've got a pretty decent memory, so I was like, man, I've never seen it in anybody's channel. And within a minute of calling them out, they'd usually follow a moderator or two, but never yep. actually support any of the smaller streamers that needed it. So kind of that, that, just... That's uh, actually a good point there is calling people out. And there's a couple of people who do this. I was actually talking about this earlier. Um a lot of people, you know, on the internet, you have to deal with trolls. You have to deal with this, that, the other thing. Um, you haven't, I haven't seen that in your channel. I haven't seen too much. Maybe it's just going too fast these days. But generally, you're, you're not dealing with a whole lot of that. Um, I, I wonder if it's the community itself or if it's what you're doing or your energy. Maybe a combination of everything there. But um, when we do get, when I get a troll in my chat... I like to pull their face right up on the screen if I can, you know, and uh, just point it right out and say, hey, you can either be a troll and I'll troll you right back or just join the community. Stop trolling. Enjoy yourself. There's people here who are good people. Uh, how did you handle trolls when you did have them? And, and do you have them and just ignore them? I, I don't even ever see it. I mean, everybody gets them. and I think it's kind of funny because uh, I, I do follow for follow and I did it for a long time. Like I've unfollowed some people because I'm not a huge fan of their content. Or I don't think that our uh, views meet up in the end. But at the end of the day, I met some of my favorite like, streamers just checking out their channel, hanging out for a few. And one yeah. of the biggest things was we had somebody stop in when I was playing Dark Souls 3 and I was talking about, like, I want to help get other people partnered. And he's like, oh, this Reaper Fox 42 guy wants to wants to get everybody partnered. He's saying we're all getting partnered. And <laughs> what he says he's going to support everybody. And it was funny because the chat just like blew up and we're like, well, he actually stops by all of our streams all the time and he's connected us and just shut him down. Yeah. And he came back the next time I streamed the same game and tried to bring it up again. And it was a different group of chatters and they all said the same thing again. They're like, this guy actually supports people and doesn't just talk about it because you yep. do get the people that are like, hey, I'll support you when I can, or I've had a lot of people lately been like, hey, I love watching your success, and, like, I've never really seen them in my chat or seen them around any of the community, like, anybody. So it's just it's kind of interesting to watch the people that really do typically seem to succeed or at least do a little better in views. They're the ones that take the time out of their day to go and support their fellow community members and actually just give them just a little bit of their time goes a long way. But, yeah, you know, and... I, I and, see the chat community shut down the trolls. When you're interacting with your audience, it's very hyper fat. Like, I don't mean to say it in a negative way. It's like a, a hyper interaction where um, I don't even know if you give the trolls the time of day to, to be able to do it to you. I mean, maybe that's what it is. It's just you're you're so good. And this is a this is a props to you that you're just so good with your your audience because, um, you know, you know, them. you know, your audience, you know, the people in it. Uh, if you don't know them, you, you call you call them out and you ask them what they do. I mean, you're talking with chat and you have hundreds, you know, 150 people in there lately and you're still keeping up, but you're also still playing your game. Uh, and the other day there was actually something, I don't know, you know, I'm not asking for any personal details, but you had someone reach out, I think uh, they were having a hard time in life or something and they reached out to you during, do I have this right? They reached out to you in the middle of your stream and you stopped and and communicated back and forth with them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was literally yeah. the last stream. 
Yeah. And so like that touches me as well. Like, you know, we all have our bad days, but knowing that as you grow and you're obviously doing these charities and you're, you're, you're helping people out um, mentally, right? Just by having an entertaining stream and, and showing people the love and doing things that most of these other people don't do. Um, you know, Ninja's not out there talking to a stream. He's talking to his three friends that he has in his chat, you know, in his thing. And he, every once in a while, if he gets a tip big enough, he'll, he'll reply. But you're making an intimate, you know, scenario for everybody. And it's something that I personally not only appreciate, but I'm trying to mimic a little bit and, and be able to grow my own brand. And uh, but a lot of people are. So um, a couple of questions that came through that I already have that we'll get some more at the end. But a couple of questions that I, that I had uh, they came from Clean Rugs, which shout out to Clean, Clean Rugs. Thank you for submitting these questions. Um, what are your goals after you become partner? Because it's it's happening. We're 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 all in this for you. When you do, what's what what's going to be next? Like, what do you foresee uh, immediately and long term? Well, the main thing I guess I talked with a few community members about recently is, like I said, I don't want to become stagnant. I have seen some partners kind of hit a wall and they became partnered. And I've seen a lot of them, like probably four or five in specific that have dropped into the 20 or 30 averages for the last two months. And, uh, Oh, wow. After, after becoming a partner. Think, yeah. And I, I think it's largely because, you know, once you get that, it's like a, it's probably going to be like, you don't know exactly where you want to go thing or what you want to do. But what I want to do is I want to, I like to just keep growing as much as I can, but more than anything, I want to try to get a few people partnered specific from the Discord communities that have really been there and helped me out. And that way, uh, the main reason I want to get partnered in the first place is to make a Twitch team for everybody where people can yep. stop in, see the Twitch team, see the people streaming, and know that they have uh, good people that they can go check out at any time. So I talked to a few uh, communities and hopefully they can pick a member or two and probably just one, but then we can hopefully push them towards partner at least get yeah. the publicity that helps them out and it's a grind and the big thing is you can anybody can help anybody out it's up to them to continuously reach out and get views on yeah. top of those is what matters yeah. it's like we do streamers of the weekend read some peeps and they jump from like consistently about five views to about 20 and yeah. uh a lot of that time it's great because you get those jump up and views you get that your name out there but then you got to keep grinding the next day because it will drop back down there's always ups and downs, but you got to just keep the ups going as much as you can. Yeah, we were talking about that little uh, prior with the chat in that um, it's not just a gimme, right? You have to do your work. You have to put in your your part. If you want to be part of the community, the more you put into the community, the more you'll get back. And I truly believe that part of the, the fun thing about Leaky Squad that I've found is that it's worthwhile not just from a, I'm going to get viewers, but I'm making friends, friends I didn't have three weeks ago. And, uh, you know, I come into your chat, I feel like a friend. And, you know, there's a difference when you're just watching people. What's cool in this community is that you can come watch me too. And you do, you pop into everyone's chat, you say, yeet, yeet, and everyone knows you're there. So uh, that's another thing I had to ask about. You have some catchphrases. And they're starting to get, you, you said it the first time I, I joined your chat. You said, I say some things and they're going to get stuck in your head. It's just the way it's going to be. Uh, and they are. I mean, was it sit down, Peter Pan? We got yeet, yeet. And we got a bunch of stuff. I mean, you don't need to go through them all right now, but you get a good time over there. And then you do start to get these catchphrases just like anybody else. I mean, as you grow, people are going to listen. And, and uh, yeah, yeeting your way downtown. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, um do you come up with new ones? Or are you set in stone on these? Are you trying to, are you trying to get into Walmart with a yeet yeet shirt or what? No, I just, uh, I just, I just enjoy, I'd say goofy shit when I scream all the time. I hope it's okay that I curse, but, uh, <laughs> I just say goofy stuff. And I always have when I stream, like whenever I play games with my friends, like I'd say I'd be hitting people to rigmarole, just like the dumbest, dumbest things that don't make any sense. And I was I was fairly good at the game, so I could usually pull stuff off randomly and like hit somebody with a headshot by accident or something. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just just really that's what with me and streaming. Even before people were in chat, I would just say dumb stuff like this all the time because I just like to talk match it on every video game until I die and get embarrassed. That's awesome. 
that's fun. I mean, there's all different types of people when you stream. You got the trolls, you got the nasty guys, you got the people who don't have a microphone, and then you got you, you eating your way downtown, you know? Uh, I, how does it feel to be the number one streamer on, on Doom, right? Because you hit it this week, right? You're the number one Twitch streamer for a game that everyone's heard of. I mean, it's it? confusing. Confusing? Because it's, uh, I, I don't know, to me, I've talked to people about it because they're like, how do you deal with like 100 viewers at once or don't you freak out? And mm -hmm. uh, I, I tell pretty much everybody the same thing is I'm like, I'm dealing with one viewer at a time. Like, yeah. I don't treat it as 100 people are there. I'm talking with whoever's chatting with me, whoever happens to stop in. I'm yep. there for them at that time. I'm not there for 100 people in total. I'm here there for you. And I want to give awesome. you the best time you can get on the stream. Yeah, and that's, so, I, like I, I said, I felt that. It's it's really cool, yeah. but in in terms of the Doom, you know, like I said, Doom's a game that every person has heard of that plays video games. It's one of the first games I've ever played, and I remember back when I was a kid, and Doom one had come out, and then you could, make, you know, the emulators and crap came out, and you could like make your own versions of Doom and stuff. A big Doom is coming out. Is it this year or early next year? There's another Doom coming out. It's this year, November twenty second. I, okay, so I got so, hammered by the community for that one, so I know. <laughs> so timing wise, right? And I'm just a, uh, you know, I, I, my mind always goes towards business and thinking about the possibilities, but you're going to be a TwitchCon. You're the number one Doom streamer in the world on Twitch. And there's a big Doom coming out. Are they reaching out? Are you, are you hearing anything? Or, you know, is, the, is that a conversation you can even talk about? Or, or, you know, is it just not yet? And you're waiting to see if you can get partner before you even worry about stuff like that. Yeah, I really don't. I haven't worried about any of that stuff until I guess okay. I get partner. And then it's mm -hmm. still kind of like a lot of that stuff, if it happens, it would be cool. But yeah. I just, uh, it's one of those games I've really enjoyed because I love a grind and I love something that's not impossible but extremely challenging. That's why the Permadeath Ultra Nightmare oh my is pretty God. cool. It's like Skeptic Therapy and he's my brother. And uh, oh, okay. I've, I've known he's been grinding on it for ever. And yep. uh, I just enjoyed playing the game, and I love the graphics and the animations, and I really like the single-player games because I can chat with you guys. So I just kind of kept playing it for a while to get back into it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. For those of you who might not have understood what he just said, he plays Doom on a one-life-only game. You die, you're done. Like old-school Mario, you know? So kids these days, they don't know what they got. Like, they can just save. They can continue. I mean... Even Courtney out there is playing on an old school system, but she hits the save button every 10 seconds, you know? So, um, but you, you play for real. You die, you're done. And uh, you got to start over. Um, it's an interesting and fun way to play. I know a couple of games that, that do that. And so uh, uh, Diablo 3, for example, they have a mode like that where you can play and, and you can play for a long time. I had a friend who played for a long time, months. And then it, him and his wife both died one night. Like, <laughs> And then your, your journey is over. <laughs> Jeez. So, uh, all the pain. Yeah, seriously, seriously. But I mean, you you kind of have to accept it. Now in Doom, um, with with this game coming out, are you gonna stick with the current game, or are you gonna are you gonna try to get over to that new one? I'll probably move to the new one. Uh, okay. Realistically, I'm kind of weird about like as soon as I beat Ultra Nightmare, I'm not gonna know exactly what I want to do with Doom. The biggest okay. thing I think for me right now and why I'm grinding on it is I enjoy it. The, I'm meeting a lot of community members from Doom in specific. And uh, the fact that I think being the number one streamer for it would really help out the partner application. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But I'm not totally sure. I never know what they're looking for there. Well, I mean, We've had like four partners lately and said I should get it. So I'm like... Yeah, I, I would say, and I mean... I don't want to say something that puts a bug in your ear that you're going to get it and then not, and then make you disappointed. I think you're, you have a good head on your shoulders, but I mean, when I watch your stream, if I were Twitch, there's no question. You're the type of person that I would want supporting my brand. You know what I mean? And so I'd be on board if I were them. And that's coming from uh, not just cause I, I, I know you a little bit and I like you, but pure business. If I was a, you know, a business person at Twitch, I'd be like, that's the kind of guy we need to promote. And it's because of you have high energy. Uh, you're, you're serious about what you're doing and you're doing things for a good cause. They, they, I really am pushing for your success in this. And I hope that, uh, anyone here who's not following him, if you, you know, constantly give the shout out. Thank you very much, Rooks. Um, follow him. It doesn't take more than a second to hit the button and it helps him immensely. 
if you can subscribe to him, that helps even more because as he was saying here, uh, when, when he's going for partner, it doesn't matter if he's got a hundred people in a stream every day. If there aren't certain things like behind the scenes, they know that he needs a certain number of subscriptions or whatnot, uh, to, you know, to achieve the partner status, uh, then he's got to, he's got to get that. So we got to help him, right? Uh, one of the people that has helped you significantly is Sir Vikings. And I don't know if he's out there right now, but a shout out to him as well. Um, he, he saw the charity stuff that you were doing and he just, he went ham with you, man. And uh, you challenged him. What did that feel like when he gave out, I don't know, was it 10 tier three or even more tier? Th I don't even know how many. Uh, that one stream was absolutely off the wall, man. You were, you were hyped as could be. How'd that feel when people are going and doing that for you? I mean, I just, it's a crazy feeling because I, I never feel like I really deserve anything. I just really love having fun with you guys. And like yeah. you said, I have been harping on the subscriptions because I know, Have to. I'm pretty sure if Twitch don't look for anything, they're going to look for something, someone from a business standpoint. So I've tried to make myself marketable. I have a logo and color scheme most people can recognize right away. Yes. I, uh, you know, with the subscriptions, we're up to like almost 600 subs for the month. Holy and God, everything you guys do for me just really means a lot. I mean, the community's grown constantly and steadily, but yep. like stuff like that, I just I'm always at a loss for words for things like that because I never expect any amount of money, and it just kind of blows my mind. And yeah, especially him because I've not just seen him in my channel. I've seen him in so many channels, just gifting subs left and right. And yep. he really just loves to see people happy, I guess, because that's exactly the guys just me. sharing that love everywhere. I was talking to him one night at like 4.30 in the morning. And I was just like, why, what is this all about? And he said, I just love seeing people smile. And he meant it. I mean, he really, he really meant it. And uh, there's a lot of people like that, that we have in this community. Uh, a lot of the, you know, um, the people I come across have that similar mindset. And I think that's why it's growing so fast. Your community has absolutely taken off. Um, I think last I checked, 850, 900, close to 900 people in Reaps and Peeps. Uh, what's that like? You have, I know in, in our community... Thank you for the follow, uh, Drosse. Uh, in our community, we have uh, a lot of people working together. And now all of a sudden, people in our community are from your community, and people from our community are over there and yours, and it's back and forth. Uh, you've been doing this for a little bit longer than us. What's it like? Uh, I mean, I kind of, I'm, I'm, this is new to me, right? Just a couple weeks. You've been doing it for, I think I saw, was it September you really got started? How's it? What? I started October 2018, yeah. October, okay. Um, What's it feel like to have such a, a hyped up and loud community supporting one man? I mean, they're supporting each other too. Don't get me wrong, but they're there for you, bud. What's it feel like? I mean, it's just enjoyable watching. Like I said, like, I love that everybody stops by for me, but I like that people support each other and the overall community yep. is the biggest thing for me because, uh, especially Red Hammer Gaming is the backbone of the discord. All the moderators do an amazing job, but, yep. um, We've actually pruned a ton of members constantly. That because um, when we first did it, the Discord started. We had a now live section, and we realized the big problem with that was people would get to level three, or they would hop in, get to the now live section, and they would just bail. And we also realized nobody was um, clicking on or interacting with the links, and that's why we kind of. I always just try to tell people, I'm like, don't just. You can drop a link anywhere, nobody's going to notice. But if you at least talk to them a little bit. You might develop a connection like you both like the same game. You're playing a game they like, they can stop in. You're kind of, your type of chat interaction is what they're looking for. But every time people were dropping the link, it was pointless. So we did away with a lot of the ad everyone and stuff. And yeah. uh, I did kind of get selfish with the Discord lately just because of the push for partner. And I want to get that Twitch team for us. And after that, I'm like I said, we're going to make it towards somebody else getting pushed for partner. But um, I just get just overjoyed when i get up on the discord in the morning and there's like 200 messages of people just chatting it up and not just that but people talking about their mental health and if they had a problem yep. that day and there's somebody that just immediately hops in and is like hey is there anything i can do for you and obviously we can't really physically do a lot but just knowing that there's somebody there that cares and wants hey. to see you do a little bit better that day is just immensely helpful in my opinion. yeah and, and brian the, the um the connection is real for a lot of these people um, I personally, you know, I'm not afraid to say it. I suffer from that every once in a while. I go through some really, really shitty times. And, and just having a person, someone that's willing to say, what, what's the matter, you know? Uh, it, it, it does feel good when it comes from someone who you're looking up to. I mean, people are watching you. 
Uh, they're also looking over and seeing a hundred other people are watching you. Soon it's going to be more. Um, so the little, the little connection that you make, it doesn't take a whole lot and you make people's day. You could actually turn people's, not just their day, but their lives around if, you know, if, if you make the right connection. Um, I try, I mean, I'm, I'm not perfect, but I try just in general to be nice to people. Um, and you know, I see it in you just in the way you are with this. I mean, just look, man, you're, you're a firefighter and an EMT. You're saving people's lives. You're saving people's stuff. Uh, that's what you do for a living. And now you're out here and you're, you're working with charities to, to, to give them, you know, funds to help other people. Uh, what are some of the charities that you've worked with and what have you been able to accomplish so far? So, so far I've uh, just used Stiltify because it's very simple and that it's an easy way to where people know that the money's going to that and not to me. And uh, we went with Mental Health of, Health of America was the first one. And I did that when I was at around like, I think 25 to 30 views, but the community's always been very close and tight knit. We managed to raise $500 for it. We did one for suicide prevention. Uh, a couple months later, we raised about 700 something. Yeah. Um, did one to help pay the bills of cancer patients recently. We raised seven hundred, about fifty dollars. That's and that's the one I stopped. I usually put about fifty dollars of my own into it, and I dropped about a hundred fifty dollars on the anxiety gaming one this time. And like I would say, it's more. I just want people to know that there's somebody out there that cares about their mental health. Because um, yeah. gaming, I I feel like around gaming, I did a major in sociology. And it seems like gaming is an escape for a lot of people. So a lot of people yeah. that do game typically have some sort of, even if it's small or large, some sort of mental health going on. And um, just knowing that there's other people there that can connect with them and really help them out or even just be there for them for the day, I think is huge. Yeah, uh, gaming for me has been 100% my my escape. Uh, you know, when, when things are tough or you just got to get your, your mind off of something, Playing a game like Witcher 3 or, you know, Fortnite or whatever, you can just get so lost in it because you have challenges or quests or whatever. You don't have time to think about the real world, you know, and you can just completely devote yourself over into into that. And so it is, you're, you're, you're dead on the money. It, it's, a, it's a way for people to cope with the real world, you know. And so a lot of people that I know, I, I think I'm at the cusp here, um, you know, I'm 39 in a couple of days. Thank you for the, uh, what I get? Thank you for the host, Jose. Um, but uh, I'm on the cusp. A lot of people older than me, I was saying this prior to as well, they don't they don't get the Twitch thing. Like, why, what's the point? Like, you're just going to put yourself on camera and the people are going to just watch you? And then the people below me, people younger than me, not below, but younger, they completely get it. And it's like this fine line. I was born in 1980 and, and uh, you know, um, a lot of my friends, it's mixed. People around the same age, it's either, you know, it's a give or take. But it feels like that's the line that that I've witnessed to where you either get it or you don't. And um, it's going to start changing as, as it hits critical mass. I don't think it's hit critical mass. I think come November, when Google gets into the mix for real, it's going to start to hit critical mass. It's going to start to get bigger. And people are going to start to understand that their children they're you know are watching this stuff and then five to ten years the kids are going to be the ones dictating what is on tv and they're going to say we don't want to watch that we want to watch reaper we've been watching him for years put them on tv you know what i mean as opposed to um i mean that the old the stuff is old a lot of the times they don't the commercials and this and that uh the twitch in my opinion has done a really fantastic job of one we talked about already having ways to keep the trolls out and two um the ads aren't so intrusive i mean you get to when you become partner you get to choose when you play those ads you know but oh you're getting all the ads <laughs> we're all getting the ads you hear that everybody <laughs> we're sending them to a world world winning federation he's getting all the ads did you hear about this by the way he's he's dodging jimmy t i don't know if, just just a rumor just a rumor but um so anyways uh, that's besides the point. Um, I, I do have some questions about the mustache and I did some research because this is seriously, you know, this is a serious mustache. I'm growing the beard. This is not getting shaved until TwitchCon. I don't know how far it will go. It's a couple months, but I think it'll, you know, you know, we'll get down here. 
when did you start growing that mustache? Because that's a badass mustache. Well, it's a, uh, it's really ironic for me. I grew it sarcastically for work because <laughs> I've never grown, hey, I've never grown a mustache before. A terrible that's facial hair. Say, you, you had a baby face not too long ago, so. Yeah, because we'll have to shave every day from work on uh, the beard, so I couldn't couldn't grow the beard. And then I was at the firehouse for about oh two months, and then uh, one of my buddies had a mustache, and he's only been here like a year. He's like, "Hey, man, you guys should start growing yours." And I was like, "All right," because I just I'm goofy and I just typically don't care. So I'm like, "Whatever, yeah. what's the worst that happens?" And I just kept growing it, and then it kind of grew in like uh, like country style with a little little goatee thing going. In. Yep. And uh, I just started like throwing a little wax in there, like jokingly, and it just started <laughs> holding really fast. So I don't even like, I don't wax it anything. I just literally <laughs> wash it in the shower enough. and then just whirl and it goes. So you know you can't get rid of it now, right? I mean, when you become partner with that mustache, that's the way of life for you for the rest of your life, or as long as you're. Oh yeah! Life, oh yeah! You know, this is it. Stuck uh, with. Would you? <laughs> it's ironic because uh, the best thing for me is luckily my. Uh, girlfriend never has known me without it mm -hmm. so i'm dodging a big <laughs> bullet there because i'm like that's he actually, doesn't know what it's like without it so i'm like you just kind of got to stick with it at this point that's actually that's a funny uh that's a funny story to be able to tell down the road too like yeah i, I she doesn't know how good looking i am without this thing you know i i, I on the other hand um you know I, i've gone bald as well but i had all that and so now I don't. Now it's like, you know, sorry. This is what you're stuck with now. Um, let's see. Yeah, the hair just runs off, questions. man. <laughs> I don't just know. Is there one day and the next it's gone? Shampooing and you're like, what am I shampooing up there? It's nothing. Uh, let's see. How did you How did you hear about the Leaky Squad? Oh, it was actually a Sir Beef Ribs. Yeah, was I was a uh, because one of the biggest things I tell people is if you're really, really looking to grow and it's a lot of times it sucks. It's a lot of uh -huh. work. But uh, immerse yourself in the community 100%. I mean, I literally wake up, I hop through the Discord communities. Yes. And a lot of times Discord communities are active at different times. I check my Instagram messages. I check my Twitter. I usually post once a day on Instagram, maybe twice a day on Twitter. And uh, just check on other people in the community. And um, I met Sir Beef Ribs on Twitter. And I was like, that's a great name, old man. How's it going? Because I just reach out to everybody. Because I'm like, the worst that happens is they don't say anything back but if yeah, they respond exactly. i'm like okay now we have a communication going like we can start something here yep. so i just started talking to him he's like hey man you should join up the leaky squad and i was like oh sure and then he introduced me to the scotsman family the leaky squad uh, yep. uh headbangers is actually a community that branched off of reaps and peeps from rockstar at i believe or he might have done it really soon after but um he's got a good community himself and uh I'm in a lot of like smaller discords, but I'm very, very picky about the ones I was active with. And I actually never introduced the Reaps and Peeps to another larger community because we're really defensive about people leeching. And uh, yeah. we've seen some owners in the past that have just absolutely taken advantage of the community 110%. And we didn't want that. And uh, within a week of getting to know the Leaky Squad, I knew that they were basically on the exact same mindset as we were. They just want to see people have fun, they want to grow themselves. But they really, really took the time to hang out with each other, support each other, and get to know each other. And I thought that it was exceptional because I stopped by like Cushy Nug Stream, yep. uh, Leaf Crawfish, to Cushy you're Nugs, seeing man. in there, Fiasco, Lil Yesh yeah. is in there, Dragon Nuts 89. You see all these people just hopping in the chat. And I was like, that's cool. That's that's what a community is about. There's my man right there. Sir Vikings just popped in. <clears throat> For everyone who's in my chat, you're not allowed to watch this stream as long as you're if you're not following Sir Vikings. That's my rule. He's a so national treasure. He is a national treasure, man. Um, you know, from from uh, the name itself, Leaky Crawfish, uh, I was intrigued. And straight up, uh, you know, these guys were so so welcoming to us, to me and Joe. And, um, you know, I thought you were part of the board when I came in. I didn't know that you were from your own community. I was like, who's this Reaper guy? Um, and, and so I love the interaction between the two communities. And I know that we have a little bit of a, a challenge going on between the two. We're looking to do, um, I guess a tournament, a game tournament between the two different, uh, sub or geez, not subreddits, the two different, uh, discord channels. And so I know on ours, we post about it. Um, I don't know if you've, if you've mentioned it on yours, I, I'm sure you probably, yeah, have. we, we brought it up. 
And so, oh Jesus, look at this man. Look at this man. There it is. That's the Sir Vikings for you. You heard the one ding, but that was uh, 20 dings coming coming our way. And, uh, yeah, if, if you're not following that, man, you better be. Reaper, he just hit me. He just hit me with a 20 spot. Tier 1 subs coming through. There it is. I figured because now it's just going to blow my phone up in 10 minutes. Yeah. Like said, thank you, my man. I, I, I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. And those of you who, um, yeah, for those, for those of you who don't understand Twitch or don't fully get it, I mean, this is it right here. It's a community. The Reaper talked about it. I'm talking about it. Uh, it's, it's, I, Can I, I uh, say something about communities and interaction real quick? You can 100%. I'm just going to sit back and listen to these dings while you talk. Okay. Uh, the big thing I was saying, especially about like Leaky Squad, is, and I don't, I, a lot of people I don't think realize it. I watch the chat a lot of times without chatting, because I like to see how people interact with each other more than anything. Because people will, a lot of times people interact with you a little different than themselves. Especially like I, I have gotten a little larger lately. So a lot of people that weren't, I feel like totally realistic with me in the first place, are now kind of branching out. And like, hey we should talk now. I'm like, well, okay, that's kind of weird because, like, you didn't want to before. And, uh, yeah, yeah. a lot of people will be a little different, and I really like to watch and just see if people treat everybody the same way. I don't really want to be, I want to be treat people like me, that's great, but I like to see people actually treat each other with the respect that they're willing to treat me with. So, it's that's, any Discord, just, an, if you don't have time to chat, just read. Yeah, that's an interesting, um, interesting thing you know in real life we deal with that all the time um when i say real life i'm just referring to the outside of twitch world uh the the idea right you're building this community and you're very good with names you're very good with people i feel like you might have a decent memory here uh as you as you grow you're obviously going to try to do the best you can with making your community you're always going to have these people, right? It's a, there's a bell curve to everything, and, and the bell curve here is that you're going to have uh, people who don't they don't put forth the effort, and then all of a sudden they're going to want you to do all this stuff for them, and they're going to make they're going to raise hell when you don't because they you know. But how do you, how do you specifically handle that now? Because I'm sure if you don't host somebody who says please host me, you might get shit back. You know, you might get. Leaky crawfish, thank you very much, my man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I uh, I just invite them to the community, honestly, a lot of yeah. times, or I'll be like, I the main people I go out of my way to support are the ones that are supportive in the community, and I love the people that do things for me. And like, since Sir Vikings gave gave me donated that money to me the other day, I've subbed to like ten times. I've just been going around some people who've been supportive, yep. but uh, I just tell them to jump in the community. If they happen to be in the community and they're active and supportive, then. I'll, 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 I might read them up or I'll talk to them or at least give them a shout out or there's so many free ways to help people out that take three seconds of your day but uh, on the flip side of that like I said I've seen a couple people uh, on Instagram reach out recently that I've never heard to before and it's just kind of weird because I'm like just stop by stop by the community and some of them do and they're like why didn't I ever stop by here before they're like it's all so positive there's so many nice people and I'm like I know you should just it takes two seconds to yeah, stop into a community just you don't have to you know, stay but you never know who you'll find and given it that chance, uh, you know, it's funny the um, you know, having to talk with a couple friends and saying, you know, just join the Discord, just come on over. And I get a lot of, I'm not too into the Discord. But a Discord done right versus a Discord where they don't really know what they're doing with it is two certainly different things. And my Discord, uh, I started doing some things right on the, on the backlog Discord, but it it wasn't until I came to Leaky's Discord and I understood what you could do with it. And it was like, oh shit, okay, there's, there's, and then my mind starts going and I can't sleep at night because it's like, all I'm thinking about is, oh, I, I need that bot. And I'm currently uh, working with a developer for a bot that will allow us to do a little bit more with community level involvement, right? And in the sense of, um, there's a lot of multi-twitch tools out there. There's a lot of uh, being able to watch more than one stream at the same time. And I personally am a little bit sick about it. I'll put eight, 10, 12 people on my screen. But back in the day, I'm resizing all these windows. I'm trying to watch, you know, especially like a Fortnite tournament or something. I'm trying so to watch So you got to be careful with that stuff too, honestly. 
Why is that? Because Twitch, I've learned uh, the multi-stream and Lurker TV and those ones in specific, they yep. typically don't count those towards partner views. So it's great in the aspect of it'll help people with views and it can't help with growth on some streamers. But if you know any streamers like G Wayne Live, me, Commander Peeps going for it, um, there's a few others. But if you ever see them going for it, make sure to pull up an actual tab. Because at the end okay. of your stream, you can look down below and you'll get the direct views. You'll get the, right now I've got Tiltify views. Um, I usually get about 85 to 90% number... direct. Damn, yep. I didn't. And then there's really... a multi stream and the Lurker TV. And something I'll say is, I would suggest not doing Lurker can. I did them for a little bit, and I okay. probably get about 12 views a stream from Lurker TV. And this was like yeah. back January, February when I first pushed. And uh, it was nice, but at the same time, like, most of the people in those are simply in it for the views. I never connected or had really anybody follow. I'd reach out to them consistently, and nobody yeah. ever contacted back. It was the weirdest thing, and I really just found it in Lurker specifically. And yeah. – um it was literally just lurker.tv and I uh, just like I said I totally left all those and I dropped at them for a few months and made sure I was all the way out so now all I'm getting is direct views I get like a 2% multi stream but right now we're in like the weird thing for me is we've been in the 90 to 114 averages and I've got technically I've got an 84 average view right now but my partner application only says that 7 because they've discluded Lurker TV, they discluded raids, unless people are there for so long, they discluded hosts. They discluded raids. And they discluded something else. So they really cracked down on Lurker TV recently. And okay. since they cracked down on that, I know the raids was the big one, but if you look at the actual specifications, it's really weird. So that's well, the strange I mean, I thing. Guess... I know I've got a couple streams from June that were like 45 average and 47. I've got two yeah. left that as soon as those go away, I'll beat the oh, 75. But uh, it's just kind of weird how they. Um... Well, that's really good to know uh, as I work with this guy, because, I, I mean, I'm in direct contact with him. Um, I just my whole thing is is getting people to be able to get seen. And, you know, if you're on your cell phone, um, you might only be able to pull up one. But if I can get your website that gets you four right on your cell phone, you know, at least you can watch more. Um, I personally, it's kind of silly, but I do watch all eight generally. And so. um I like people who come in to lurk to help the numbers, but like you just said, I personally don't need the numbers. I'm not necessarily planning on this taking over, you know, my life. I mean, it'd be cool. I definitely wouldn't say no, but at the same time, um, I just like the community aspect of this, and I love just seeing. I love seeing people successful. I really, really am. I'm not even pulling for you. I know it's going to happen. It's not about pulling for you. It's just when, right? Like you said, if it doesn't happen the first time, it'll happen one of these times. Um, yeah, and that's uh, another weird thing because I love multi-stream and I think it's great. But because yeah. they cracked down the lurker, they had to crack down on that too. So I understand well, probably, where they're coming. Probably where they came up with this new multi-stream thing. For, probably why they finally launched something, right? Because they did. They're oh, working yeah. on it. And, uh, they're working on it. Another thing I will say, kind of watch out for it is... And I know I'm pretty sure there, I'm not going to name specific communities, but there's a few communities that do like a point system. So if you stop mm -hmm. in somebody's stream and you chat or you like host the stream, you get so many points and basically they will send people your way based off of these points. Yeah. And it's pretty easy to see the people to do it because their views will usually jump from like 50 to 150 down to 80 back to 90 and like just yep. fluctuate highly. And a lot of those again it's kind of it's weird because i've seen some people going for partner lately and they have a million views they're constantly in the numbers but they're getting denied and i would kind of like to think that's probably why because it's very similar to just people trying to abuse the system yeah which it's the views are great and it's easy easy to get lost in the views but um and it, they do help it just it's there's so many little things that go on with it's kind of like money, right? They say money can't buy you happiness, but it does help sometimes when you have the money to spend on happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, we kind of saw it at the beginning here, right? You have the, Your job specifically is one of those types of jobs that you're on call, right? Boom, you could be sitting in the house and, and or station, and all of a sudden you're up and at them. Uh, there was a question that came in, how do you juggle work and streaming? I'm going to assume... It's your, your streaming schedule that helps that. But I want you to talk a little bit about that because I think in addition to that question, 
it's the work life balance, so to speak, right? Uh, so, what does your what does your significant other feel about all this, and how do you juggle work work life and streaming? I'll say she's definitely more on board with it now that I I make a little bit of money off of it, which it's mm -hmm. I basically want to make enough to where I can pay rent and pay to upgrade my streams and actually give back because. You guys, subscriptions and bids go towards all the giveaways I get to do. I get so happy to get to do this. I got to donate $150 to the charity. Little things like that really yeah. help out a ton. But um, um, I would I would say that I wish I was wearing my Reaper shirt. I did get one of the, the, the giveaways. I was lucky. Unfortunately, it's in the wash right now. And yeah. so, ah, everyone, this happens. is Wesley. Wesley, come say hi to Reaper. Hi, Reaper. Hi, Wesley. Hi. Wesley likes to interrupt my streams, so if you do come to my uh, my Twitch stream when uh, Reaper's not here, that you might meet Wesley or Jagger, or our dogs that like to bark while I stream. They're yep. doing pretty good right now. We actually <laughs> have like a new. We have like um a, a, our friend's dog. Yeah, our friend's dogs here. So we have four dogs in the house. Um, what what questions do you have for Reaper? You watch a lot of Twitch. Mhm. Mm I. What's your question? Um, I also. Play with the dogs. No, what's your question? Ask him a question. Uh, <laughs> he has a mustache. Ask him about his mustache. Uh, he has a mustache. Okay, so the question is, you have a mustache. Is that, uh, I guess it's a yes or no. I accept. He accepts. He says, he accepts? He's got it. Yes, he does. He, yes. It's the best mustache on Twitch. He does? He, he absolutely does. He's hidden right there behind that little image, but... All right, I'm going to get back to this interview, okay? Okay. Go have fun. Okay. That's like the third time he's been in here, but, you know, he's providing content. That's what it's all about. So, uh... And, uh, uh what, so what you're saying about the uh, schedule was I do a weekly stream schedule. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's always been the easiest way to be flexible, not put too much pressure on yourself. And at the same time, it gives your viewers a good idea of when you're going to be there. I'm trying to stream consistently at 2 p.m. lately, Central Standard Time. So even if they don't know, we'll have an idea about the time of day I'm on. And um, the weekly one, like I said, it's just a lot of people put pressure on themselves to stream four or five times a week for eight hours a day. And I would just say, like, if you're not feeling it, that's why I like the weekly one. So you don't have to be there that day. If you want to take a day for yourself, take that day for yourself. Get feeling better. So the next day you can bring a little bit better energy. Yeah, and, and you can and utilize the host for what you do you su you support a lot of people um do you have a specific group of people that you host i notice when i go to your stream when you're not streaming or afterwards you always tend to target people who are you know i, I don't want to discourage anybody but like on the lower end like you're like hey this person's going for affiliate and so you'll send all your people to them and then they stick around for a while it's awesome to see it's a lot of times you'll see a you know a big streamer do a, a crazy raid and next thing you know, it's like goes from 10,000 to 400 in a matter of 15 minutes. Your people stick around. Leaky Squad sticks around. Next thing you know, these people are, are hitting affiliate in like a week. <laughs> you know, it's, it's nuts. Um, do you have a specific mindset behind that? Oh, it varies. Um, I really like to raid people unaffiliated that are active in the community. Or if I can't do that, I'll usually just tell people to go view them all. I mean, it's easy to get somebody five or six views. If you just talk to a few people and you ask them to help them out, people will make the time for it. But uh, really, I just try to rate somebody new every time. And uh, like if I've got somebody I'm going to rate next week who I talked to and they just, uh, I think it'll just boost them up a little bit and make them feel a little better because everybody also hits bumps and they hit times where they kind of question things. So obviously, I can't rate everybody, mm -hmm. host everybody, but I try to host people while I'm at work. Or like That's if cool. I see somebody I know grinding for it, I'll get on. Or if I see them going live, I'll get on and try to at least let people know and shout them out if I see it on Instagram. But I think there's so many easy free ways people miss to support people. Like I said, there's hosting, a shout out on Instagram, literally just reach out to the community and be like, hey, this person is for affiliation in their live, show them some love. Just takes like two things of your day to make somebody's day a little bit better. It, yeah, it's, it's really not that hard, but it's awesome when people do it. Um. Yeah, I appreciate the follows and the the subs and all this, guys. It's really it's the same thing. It's it's the it's the pay it forward system. Um, I have a couple more questions for you, and then uh, you know, just maybe one or two, and then I'll let you. I want to give you the floor to kind of talk a little bit about uh, what you know, what this all means to you, and and what you what you want from all of us. Not you know, not just like 
what can we do, not just to support you, but to make the whole community better, things like that. So um, let's see. I'm just going down, make sure I hit all these. Okay, so outside of the games that you play, uh, and, and uh, I would probably say, because you're putting a lot of effort into this, you probably don't have a whole lot of time to do this, but like prior to really getting into Twitch, what did you watch? Who did you watch on Twitch? Do you have any uh, specifics or was it? I did not. <laughs> really? You didn't watch Twitch at all? You weren't into it? No, I uh, really wasn't too much. I was focused on getting my job as a firefighter and EMT, and I played a lot of PUBG with my friends because they asked oh, me PUBG, to. Okay. I was actually ranked uh, the top point. I think I was the highest. Like I was like five ranked 500 on Xbox on duos and squads. So I was always, and I got all of them up in the top one percent too because we were all just really good, and I could I could carry the team into like a ten kill win, and uh, I just never really I don't know I never got huge into Twitch personally because I just never really enveloped myself. I had a, I had a buddy that did Twitch, and I tried to kind of like view him when I could, so that's why I actually made an account in the first place was just to view him, but it wasn't ever something that I. Not about too much, and my buddies were just like, "Hey, you talk on video games enough, you should just stream it, man." And, yep. Um, one or two of them have still supported me, but most of them are, you know, we all have personal guys that did that, and I kind of decided real fast, like I said, I wanted to just watch other people grow too, because I know how hard it was struggling when you first get going, and just to meet other people, and you don't know what to do, and you don't know where to turn, and you have 800 people giving you advice, and you hear all these big streamers that are like, "Just do everything yourself. Don't ever follow anybody back." If you have more than ten followers, you're terrible. And I'm like, I'm like, oh gosh, what? I was like, yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna meet people. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think you know, maybe that was the old way, or maybe that was the old mindset. But things have changed. Communities seem. I mean, there's always gonna be the people who get huge off of either knowing somebody or getting kind of lucky, or having a ton of money. But a community is gonna stick around. A community is gonna support each other. It's gonna support you. It's gonna support everybody. And um, it's 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 really cool what you're putting together. I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm happy to be a part of the Leaky Squad and Reaps and Peeps. Uh, let's see. Okay, so you are sponsored by Hilo Gummies, and if you use code Hugs15 at checkout, you get 15% off of those. Have you tried them? You what do you think of them? Oh, I like them a lot. I. Uh... I actually use their game time gummies. I the pre workout ones honestly are okay. They're pretty expensive for the value. Okay. Their sleep aid is really good. It's a really good value. It's like sixty servings for thirty bucks. Um, I only take one of those, and it, it honestly gets me some hard sleep. Like I have to make sure I'm sleeping for eight hours to, when I take those. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they have the they just came out with the CBD gummy as well. But um, I just got curious about the game time one. They're a new company, and they're co-owned by Travis Kelsey, who was a is you know tied in for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, and I'd never seen it before. So I was like, you know, I'll just I'll just reach out and see where it goes. And yep. They're like, uh, well, we haven't really done any sponsorships for gaming, so you know, maybe if you try out our products and like it, we'll contact. And that's I um, tried them out. And I really enjoyed the game time one. I like the lime flavor. I've heard mixture. It's like a love hate relationship. They're they're surprised but, uh, to hear. Everybody says they're very very effective. And sorry if I interrupt you, but I can't hear you over my echo sometimes. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I forgot about that. But um, I was just saying that there's people in chat who are surprised to hear that there are pre-workout gummies. And yeah, I mean, sometimes you don't like that taste of the, the pre-workout mix or the drink or whatever. Uh, but I was checking these guys out and I'm going to get some. Get the blue because... raspberry. The blue raspberry? Okay. Get the blue raspberry. They sent me, yeah, they sent me one of each flavors, actually, and I've been sampling okay. them with the firefighters. The Swedish fish is weird. The cotton candy is pretty good. I love Swedish. Does it taste but, like Swedish uh, fish? But the blue though? raspberry is good. Does it, does it sour. really taste like Swedish? They're yes. sour? Okay. Uh. Yeah. They do not taste exactly like Swedish fish because I'm a huge Swedish fish fan. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest about the reviews, and I'm not going to sit here and be like, mm -hmm. you know, it's the most. And the effects for pre-workout, for me, were okay. I take a ton of pre-workout. And that's why the game time gummies are like $30 for 20 servings. They give you okay. really good energy. I like the taste, but um, everybody that's bought them at least says the effects for focus and energy are phenomenal. Well, I'm picking up some, and I'm going to use your code. So, uh, Hugs15, and I'm not lying, I am going to buy them. Uh, the other well, thanks, buddy. Too, Send me a picture when you get them so I can oh, shout I will. you out. I will. Uh, yeah. Because I am their only gamer sponsor. 
Really? Okay, okay. You hear that? Yeah. Chat, we can do this, all right? Halo they didn't even is... know what Twitch was. See? that I'm telling you, there must be over 30, or over 40. Oh, they're <laughs> um, just new. They're new, new. Yeah. So, the other thing, too, is the merch store. And you have some really awesome merch. Like, shit that people would really wear out. When I got mine from you, and I got lucky, I mean... There were a hundred and some people in the uh, in the stream when you did a random gift sub and it just our gift merch, and it just happened to be me. And I got it in the other day. Like I said, I wish I was wearing it right now, but it's wet. However, I put it on. My wife was like, oh, "A good shirt." You know, people. Uh, I went out and um, what is that? You know, they're like it's just a cool ass. It's the rip shirt, uh, and I, I posted that on Instagram and YouTube. I think I did a little video on YouTube, but it's good merch. So you can get that off of, if you go to his, his Twitch page, which is twitch.tv slash reaperofhugs42, scroll on down at the very bottom, you'll see his merch store. Click on it. He has some good merch. And it does, uh, I, th- I, I want to let you answer this, but you put it at base cost or close to base cost, right? Yeah, it should all be base cost, I think, minus like one or two coffee mugs or something. Like, yeah. And it's only like one or two dollars. I think the pants I put two dollars on because they took me a while to figure out and it pissed me off. Was that for so, Jazzy? Was they were kind of weird. Or the pants you did that for for Jazzy. Yeah, because right? I did the pants specifically for Jazzy, but I had to figure out. I'm not great with editing and stuff, so it takes me a while. And Alienotic made all my logos, but I had to like oh, nice. put everything together for the shirts and figure out how they would work properly. And I actually, the other thing I did was I bought pretty much one of all the logos and t-shirts myself. To try on because oh, I wanted so to make sure they them. wouldn't just wash right out because okay. they were really colorful, vibrant, and like I said, the tank top immediately washed out with a few washes. So I oh, took it man. out, and all the rest, like the dab shirt, stayed. And I've had it for months, and uh, that's why I just did base cost because if you guys are willing to wear my stuff around, that is so cool, and that's why I love doing the giveaways. Yeah, I like giving that to you guys. It's something small I can give you guys, and it does cost me money, but at the same time, I want to give that to you guys because. It's just money that I've made on Twitch that I want to give back to you guys with. Yep. And that's something I'd say. If you guys are looking to do yourself, make your own shirts, wear them around, because I get comments on them in public, and it makes me feel good. Like, I don't tell people to go buy them, but it's just kind of cool. It's like, hey, this is something that I put together, and they really like Yeah, you know, um, we're, we're just kind of getting started with that over there in Leaky Squad, uh, LS5. We got the new logo. And we're super hyped because we're all talking on the you know the, the back back rooms about what we want what do we want to see. Uh, I'm definitely getting myself an LS5 hat and a shirt. I think the logo looks pretty good, uh, but the um, it, it's it's a it's passionate to be able to uh, to, to put that stuff on there. I, mean, I did I had a t-shirt company for ten years, and I got to put anything I wanted on a shirt. So I put anything I wanted on a shirt. I had some really stupid shirts. I had some really risky shirts. Uh, but I want to just extend to you from me, um, you know, we're, I, I got my stuff out, right? Cause we're going to be doing some leaky squad stuff and, uh, I do have the tools and I do have the capabilities. So if you ever want to do like a giveaway or something, um, just reach out. I'll let, I'll be honest with you, you know, if I can or can't do it or whatever, but, um, work with me if you want to, and I'll be glad to, uh, um, see what we can do. You know what I mean? If you just want to do, I know they can go buy the merch and stuff, but if you want to do like a cheap shirt giveaway or something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we'll, we'll figure something out because I love what you do. I want to be able to get as many people to be able to see that stuff, see the leaky squad stuff, see reefs and peeps and, and join these communities and start your own. I always tell people, go start your own, go out there and build, you know, it starts with a couple of Google searches to figure out what the hell you need. Uh, create your Twitch, create your, your discord, and if you even have one inkling of a desire to do this for real and to, to become a brand of some sort, lock down every social media account you can. Come up with something that that you know matches or comes close across the board and, and stick with it and build it. Talk with people. Talk with people like Reaper. Please try to make it the same across the board for the love of everything holy. I hate trying yeah, to find yeah. people on Instagram and Twitch when the so name's tough. like 180 different. Yeah, and I, I will say, you know, this is something that I, I want to work with people on that have it so drastically different it's probably best to (laughs) rebrand you know pick one and try to go with it or rebrand entirely if you're not really pulling in significant numbers Um, obviously it's up to you but at the same time um, when you have someone like reaper and he's out there he's got his logos and stuff and reaps and peeps just sticks with you 
and then you watch a stream and, and a lot of his catchphrases they stick with you if you if you really truly sit there and watch him and you enjoy what he's doing you go home happy you know what i mean and so you know um that's that's really all i got to say about what you do i mean it's a lot but it's 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 real it's real and i feel it i feel what you're doing so i want to give you a few minutes take as long as you want plug anything you want talk about anything you want ask me anything you want or tell me anything you want the show is yours for as long as you want it to be i mean i would mostly just say uh, learn not even learn just market yourself and your personality like i i'm 180 degrees of goofy that's why i have the like i was just i made a car need for speed one time and my brother like we just used to play need for speed and uh i made it that color scheme of like lime green bright blue and bright pink and he's like, what even is this? And I was like, I don't know, but I like it. So I just started driving around. And now I guarantee if people see those colors, they have an idea that it's they think probably that. something from my my uh, product line somewhere. Yep. And um, other than that, like, just be yourself and surround yourself with a community that has similar ideals. Like you said about starting your own community, you'll continuously meet new people. And obviously you'll meet people in the community that are willing to support you, like the Reefs and Peeps, the Leaky Squad. But don't be afraid to reach out to other people every single day. I tell people, try to develop one connection every day. If you can reach one person, you know, every week for a year, you're reaching, I don't know how many weeks in a year, like 54 or something? I don't know. Yeah, uh, Anyways, you connected with 54 yep. new people. So it, it adds up very quickly. And uh, there's always small things you can do to help out others because a lot of them, people come and go. There's ups and downs. I'm waiting on the down right now because we just had a huge peak. So there's going to be a down at some point. It happens. But, yeah, um, but you know, just there's like only people out there that care. And uh, just keep pushing through it and grinding. Because like I said, it's a lot of people will have their personal lives. They'll get discouraged. You're probably starting off, you're not going to pull up random viewers that want to be there all the time. The people who are going to view your channel are probably other streamers or people who really care about you and want to support you as a person. So really just be yourself and um, be a decent person. <laughs> I guess would be the best thing to say. And learn That's about awesome. other streamers. Stop in the streams. Connect. That's awesome. Um, the, the branding and all that, it all, you know, you're making really good points. Like the color scheme, people just, they're going to think of you when they, you know, they see it. Um, we do have a question that just came in. And it's an interesting one because it's something that, you know, I, I try to plan far in advance. I'm a, you know, a guy who doesn't sleep much. So I'm like always thinking of something. And I thought about it. It'd take a lot for me to have to quit my job my real job to be able to do this it would take a lot probably way more than it would take most people just because you know i have the two kids i got a wife i got you know i got a, a house that i'm not living in i you know, renting out there's just it's a significant amount what if you ever became super huge like if you blew up and all of a sudden tomorrow they just decided you're the front page of twitch and say you get forty thousand subs tomorrow because of some thing that just really hit home with a lot of people uh, what would it take to, to leave your job, really focus on this 100% of the time? Is that something that, that you're even considering or, or, or thought of or or no? I mean, it's something that I thought of, but it be mostly because people keep asking. Yeah. But I really probably wouldn't because I wasn't ever in it to make money in the first place. And um, the big things I've always wanted are just to spread some positivity, make some extra money to survive on the side, pay my student loans a little bit maybe. Yeah. And... Uh, basically the charity things is a huge thing for me with the mental health too so i just i really couldn't see myself quitting the job because right now like if people really want to, i like to think of my channel like a really fun tv show i don't want to be on there eight to ten hours a day five times a week i want you guys to get excited for popping in having three to five hours of this high energy positivity at work and i guess if it ever took off like enough do it four times a week at like three hours of stream, but I want to always bring the best energy possible because I'm, yeah. I feel like I'd burn anybody would probably burn themselves out quick and I don't want it to ever feel like a job. I want it to feel like I'm having fun gaming with you guys, chilling, chatting it up and just enjoying each other's company. I'll tell you, man, I, I talk a lot about it. Your energy is literally off the charts. I love it. I really don't ever lose that. It's, it's, um, it's phenomenal energy. Uh, obviously there's going to be down days there's going to be times when when you need us to give you the love right back you know and and uh, i say that to everybody out there um anybody that you watch remember they're human right we're all we're all going through things so kind of to the point of the mental health stuff um 
you know, I did call center work for a long time, and I think one of the reasons I was good at it is because I didn't take anything personally. And so I always wondered more so what made them so mad if they're calling me and they're yelling at me because they don't know me. It's not about me. I mean, if it was me, maybe I did something wrong and I'm sorry, but, you know, I might not ever know the answer. But you could help be part of the solution, you know. If it, and like you said earlier, it just takes a second to say how you doing or, or whatever. And so when I was in the call center, you get some people, ah, blah, 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 they're yelling at you. You just stop and listen for a moment. Let them talk. Let them be them and uh, and stop and think. But also remember, as I, you know, I'm a viewer of Twitch as, a, as well as, you know, I'm trying to be, get into this, the, the being live and stuff. Uh, people go through a lot. They're using this as, a, as an outlet themselves to be streamers, to go to go do things. And so remember that as you're watching your streamers, the people you like, um, people like Vikings, people like Leaky, who, you know, all these acid has come in here making me smile, you know, and it, it means so much. It's not just about the money. It's not just about this and that. It's about, look, I have a whole chat of people over here talking and they're making a community right here, right there in this in this Twitch stream. People have never talked before. I have three or four real life friends in here. You know, people are kind of going back and forth and it's, um, it's, it means so much. That makes me smile, makes, makes the hair, you know, I don't have a whole lot, but the hair on the back of my neck kind of stand <laughs> up. And so um, what you're doing is, is significant. And remember everybody, he's not going to be able to keep up that. Le I mean, maybe you will, but that level of energy is just so awesome. It makes me feel good when I watch you. Um, I do have one last question, unless anybody else in the chat has one. Yeah, I just wanted to say something real fast oh, too, yeah. on a okay. like very realistic level with stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. A lot of a lot of the reason I do the firefighting, I want to make people happy, is because um, you know everybody goes through downs and things like that. And one of the biggest things is uh, if I'm having a down day, something that makes me happy is seeing other people actually get happy, and yes. even helping them out will actually cheer me up a little bit. So it's kind of like a weird selfish non-selfish thing i guess because i think we've all been in some dark places from time to time and they mm -hmm. vary of darkness but um well i mean one of the biggest things is that there's always there's always tomorrow there's always something new you can do and i think a lot of people don't realize how fulfilling it can be to help out other people and it's hard to maintain the like high energy and positive energy all the time so i really appreciate you guys whenever you stop in the chat and really help me out help get yeah. me going sometimes it does mean the world to me and like if I'm having a down day and I'm scheduled to stream at this point, I'm going to come stream with you guys and I'm going to bring the best energy I can, even if it's just for two hours. But if I can bring in some positivity and hopefully brighten somebody's day up a little bit in those two hours, it'll make me feel a lot better afterwards and at least feel like I accomplished something I set up. Um, yeah, that's that's huge. You know, I, I'm going to tell a quick side story that to me, it's it's something that impacted me a while for a while. Uh, is last week last month I went to a comic con in Ocala, Florida. And I mean, if you've watched my show or seen anything and you've heard about it, but you might not have. And uh, I met uh, Matsuhira Arita, probably got that wrong, but he's one of the, the original artists for Pokemon. And I'm not a big Pokemon fan. I mean, I, I, I have no problem stopping and watching a show with my kids. I mean, it's fun. It's, it's fun enough. But it was like past my, um, when I, you know, when I was growing up, it was like after I felt like it was after the age I was at. I don't know. Anyways, long story short, I was at this convention, and he was the number one guy there, the number one build guy, and he was just bored eating dinner. I mean, and there were all these rules. You couldn't talk to him. You couldn't go up and shake his hand. And uh, I'm a talker. I, I love talking. I mean, that's why I do the podcast and stuff. But if you know me in real life, I don't stop. It's, it's hard for me to stop talking. And uh, this guy's sitting across the bar, and I'm talking to the bartender. I didn't even know who he was. I'm like, I think... What's up, JD? I was like, I think that might be the guy from the magazine, you know? And I looked, I'm like, I don't know, maybe. And it turned out it was him. And, and not too long after, we ended up having beers and talking for two straight hours while everyone else was wondering who the hell I am because I'm talking to the man and I'm just talking to him about real life shit. And a couple of things that happened that really stuck out to me was one, he just wants to be normal. He, he sees, he goes to these comic cons and he sees people with art he thinks is better than his own but everyone's lined up to see him and he doesn't understand that or he gets it, but he doesn't, he doesn't want it that way. He wants it to be, he wants to be one of many, not the only person, you know, that, that idea. And he also loves seeing people smile. And he said that for years, 
he would fly to America on his own dime and he would do it because he saw that people smiled every single time he did that. And he told me in his culture, he did not know that the, the term commission, it didn't exist in his, it doesn't exist in his culture, literally, not figuratively. And so when he found out and his agent found out that he should be doing this and, and asking money for autographs, his life changed because he became very rich very quickly. But at the same time, he doesn't, he doesn't want it that way. He loves seeing people smile. But I also felt a little bit in this man that he hadn't smiled a whole lot. All He's always by himself. He's always traveling all over the world. And he doesn't seem to want to burden anybody else. And so he was. we were talking about going to Disney. And um, so this is the other part was that he really wanted to go to Disney, but he can't because he's too famous now. Like he can't just walk around because everywhere he goes, there's just lines of people and, and it, it makes it hard for the people he's working for. So Disney wants him to do autographs. He's going to follow Disney's rules. And I said, dude, no, you tell Disney you want to get on that goddamn ride. And he was like, no, that's not how we, you know, and I was like, but you're in America, right? And they're going to take everything they can from you if you give it. Um, that's the business way, the culture of America, right? If you say you'll do it for free or whatever, people will come up to you and, and find a way to get it. Uh, especially big business. So they'll be fine if he doesn't want to do anything. They'll put him in his hotel room. They'll wheel him down when they're ready and they'll wheel him back up. Or he asked to get on that goddamn ride. And so we talked for a while. It was an um, amazing talk because of his place where he's been saying exactly the same thing as you. And the next day I, I started following him on Twitter. And the next day he went to Disney and he got hammered walking around the Avatar <laughs> world. And he was taking pictures just by him. I mean, he had, he had no one with him. So he had to have given his phone to people to take pictures for him. Every time he got on a ride, he was drinking green beer, regular beer. And he just, by the end of the night, he was like, I am so happy because I am drunk. That was the last tweet of the night. And I was like, fucking phenomenal is the best. And I don't know, maybe he would have done it regardless of what I said, but I felt like I had something to do with that. Just said, just get out there and do it. And it made me feel really good too, knowing that I might've put a smile on that guy's face when that's all he's looking to do is put smiles on other people's face. So yeah, it just he, shows how much you can affect somebody's life. It's a yeah. little bit of conversation. That's it. That's it. Don't be Getting afraid. I'm not. A, yeah. Just, you're not afraid. You don't seem afraid to talk to anybody. People are blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, you're catching it all. And I love it. Um, I have one question for you because I am, if you listen to the podcast, uh, a big time VR guy. Um, I love jumping in the VR headset. I don't always get the time to do it. But when I do, I love diving in. Have you ever played this, Doom VFR? Well, I don't know if you guys know this. I don't make very much money in my game. Okay. So, fire fighters don't get paid. So, you guys actually helped me out. The new PC was like the craziest, mind-blowing okay. experience I've ever had. Because my, my old, you don't know about it, my old PC was a potato. Like, you could oh, barely wow. run. It barely played Doom. You? And uh, so, yeah, I've never played any VR stuff myself. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah, I try to invest in things that will help out the community or will upgrade the stream like currently. You know what would upgrade the stream is if we if we get to watch you. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got to go fight. Oh, later, Reaper. And that is the life of the EMT Reaper. I'm going to hang up that call. That is the most appropriate way, I think. To end that I don't think it could get more proper the timing was great um, you guys were awesome I really do appreciate you sticking around and uh, and thank you all for listening to episode number 65 of the Backlog Podcast I am Kevin and that's a wrap